benefits that could be much higher. Uh, we do have a mixture of employees, so fortunately it doesn't work that way. But I think it's important to note that uh, when you're looking at what your overall costs are, it's just not what we give as a COLA. In addition, this year we have uh, upcoming, we do have the, uh, this year we have the market adjustment that's due in July, and then in January we have a COLA. So in our projections for next year's budget, we actually have two increases that are due uh, to county employees. So uh, just a few words of caution there. And also relating to uh, what our costs are of uh, doing business and we are the general fund is still subsidizing many county departments and of course as we refine our process and, and improve our accounting system there are overhead charges associated with each of these departments that we're trying to allocate to those departments and show what those true costs are which is why we use the a87 cost plan so i think you'll see we'll get better at it as the year goes on Hopefully there will be some fees that will decrease because of uh, just a change in the nature of how we do business. But uh, these are the fees as, uh, as reviewed and supported by the Auditor Controller's Office. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Um, at this point, I'll close the public hearing and uh, to staff, pre present any final remarks or rebuttals. Thank you. I, I just wanted to tag on to what Mr. Mitchell had said as well. Um, I think it's also important to keep in mind that um, not only did we have the market rate adjustments, which at this point we, we weren't sure at the time of the fee hearings when we, we processed the fee proposals, what those were going to be. Uh, we also had a January 2008 fee, um, COLA increase, which was not taken to, uh, into account in the planning and building fees, for example. Um, so you're talking about market rate adjustments in January 2008, um, July 2008, January 2008 market uh, COLA increases, and January 2009 coal increases. So there's three big increases there. Um, adding on the weighted salaries uh, and using the A87 cost allocation, you're looking at huge increases. And by the way, the last thing I will say is planning and building have their fees effective um, January 2009. Because of the unsure uh, adjustments for the market rate adjustments, this doesn't even include the 2008 January coal increases in their calculations for their fee increases proposed today. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Mitchell, anything to add? Uh, no, I believe uh, department heads are here for response if you have questions from them. Um, Supervisor Pinches. This package first. of uh, fee increases, how much additional revenue is it proposed to generate? How, I don't have a copy of the proposed budget here, so how much is our fee revenue going to propose to increase this year over last year in your proposed budget? Um, I'm not sure of the total in the aggregate of all of these fees. I'd have to look at that and let you know. I'd be interesting to see how much that. I can get you that information. Okay. Supervisor Delmore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for Director Hall since he's here. And there are two fees that I don't understand in your schedule here. One is a septic tank system permit review. Okay. And then, coincidentally, the one underneath it is a business license review. Okay. I, I don't have those in front of me, so I'll talk in general terms. What I suspect they are is a Fort Bragg office that does a review for those septic tanks to determine whether or not it requires a coastal development permit and whether or not there are any coastal plan policies that apply. And so the same, and to some extent, it's the same thing with the business license. We review for consistency with zoning and the local coastal program. Okay, it doesn't fall under the coastal part here. It's just the miscellaneous fees, but so it's not because uh, obviously those two activities are performed by other departments. Correct. However, we also perform a review as a coordinated service. Okay, then you just made my argument once again as to why we need to combine the land use elements of environmental health with planning and building. Because if I go in for a septic permit 
part of my plans. I'm paying this part of the hallway to review my plans, and I got to turn around and pay you to review their review. Yeah, I I could check, but I would assume it's a journal entry that's that occurs and it's seamless to the applicant. It's fifty dollars isn't very seamless. Well, seamless in that they're paying in one place, regardless if you're one department or or in two departments. That cost is going to apply. Um, so, I guess what I'm saying is is probably 180 degrees from what you're you're saying in that it, there is a coordination that's occurring and that the planners are reviewing those septic tank permits so that that coordinated uh, review is occurring between at one time between environmental health as well as planning and building it understood what I'm saying though is that that makes absolutely no sense for the applicant to be paying environmental health to review and then turn around paying another 50 bucks to your department to review what they reviewed and to me those tasks ought to be in the same department for a myriad reasons but an additional 50 bucks or in the case of business license review 80 bucks I think that's even more than the business license itself is well I, again my, my response would be if it's one department or two departments in essence the fee is going to be then an additional fifty dollars because you've got two different professionals reviewing that type of project for two different reasons one is looking at it for environmental health reasons, sanitation reasons. The other is looking at it for consistency with an adopted plan. And to me, that ought to be one one task, one review. I understand your one, position. One lower fee. Right. The business license thing, though, too, uh, 80 bucks to your office, Ms. Schrappmeyer's office is the one that actually issues the permit, the, the business license. It's and I think it's less than the, the fee that you charge to review it. That's correct. What we do is we look at that for consistency with zoning so that that office does not issue a permit that then we have to go do code enforcement on because it, it is inconsistent with zoning. We also are now or will soon be looking at it for consistency with the building code so that it doesn't constitute a change of occupancy. What we're trying to do is address those up front at the permit application stage rather than issuing having a, the county generically issuing a permit and then county planning and building comes in and says well you can't do that in this zoning you don't have the proper occupancy permits from the building department and they say but the county's issued me a business license what I'm getting out of this is there's probably a better way we could do this and I don't have that answer today again I understand your position the moving land use thing which <laughs> I've been harping on for years but on the business license side I think that there's some rooms we need to approve Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Delbar. Um, so where are we at, folks? What's uh, this issue is at the board level now. Uh, what, what do we want to do with this? Supervisor. Pinches. Just a f final comment on this, and I've made it several times. We always seem to be pushing up the fees for the people that try to go by the, the rules, but yet the people want to operate in this county outside of the rules, we ignore that. And I would state, and I could prove it real easy, that if we're looking for more revenue, we could go after the unassessed evaluation in this county and get a lot more dollars coming in than increasing the fees of the people that are trying to go by the rules. You know, we need to get more aggressive on the unpermitted building 